All right, how's everybody doing? We're going to go ahead and get started. My name's Tim Hendricks. I'm from Open Policy Agent Styron. I'm your track host. So just like always, we're going to save at least five minutes for Q&A at the end. Please go ahead and stay. Uh, don't get up early. Uh, it's pretty disruptive when you leave. Also remember that at the end of the talk, go ahead and rate it. You just log into Sketch to do that. So without further ado, I'll give you Tom Wilkie, one of the maintainers of Loki and Prometheus. He's going to be discussing Loki, a log aggregation system inspired by Prometheus. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is uh, quite a big room. Um, it's quite daunting. So uh, my name is Tom. I work for Grafana Labs. I also work on Prometheus. I also work on a project called Cortex as well. And there was a couple, I gave a couple of talks about it at KubeCon in the past few days. And the new thing I'm working on is Loki. Um, when I do get spare time, which is very infrequently, I like to make my own beer. Um, I thought I'd include that for some reason. I'm actually like, I'm going off script here. I'm in a Twitter war with my wife. Uh, she's a journalist, um, and so she's getting way more followers than me. And so I'm massively whoring myself out here by asking to get followers. I've never spoken to this bigger audience before, face it. So <laughs> if, I could, if I could, you know, pass 2,000 followers on Twitter, it'd make me so happy. And my wife's so sad. So, um, you know, <laughs> make that what you will. So um, that's pretty much going to be, this is the last talk I'm giving at KubeCon. So this is the kind of, you know, this is what you're going to get, basically. So. We're going to do some audience participation. So um, who here is already using Prometheus? Hands up. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Um, who has already tried Loki? OK, so mostly people who haven't. Great. Who here, like, I, I gave a very similar talk to this at FOSDEM in February. Um, and we had a lot of feedback that people liked it. But I've I, I heard some people here have already seen it. So who's seen the FOSDEM talk? Ooh, OK, so I've summarized the FOSDEM talk. I might just give the FOSDEM talk again, if most of you haven't. I'll, I'll go to the summary. We'll see what happens. Um, and then finally, who's here because of the keynote? Like, oh, OK, that's pretty good. Yeah, having that opportunity to speak to so many people was, uh, was so awesome. So Loki, what is Loki? Loki is a, a, a horizontally scalable, highly available, multi-tenant, uh, you, know, you name it. It basically does everything. Um, log aggregation system inspired by Prometheus. We started the project quite a long time ago, actually. Um, but it went for a big lull where we didn't really have enough time to work on it. And, and we only really got to working on it and kind of pushing out the first release uh, on the way to KubeCon US. I mean, if you go and look at the, uh, the Git history, most of the code was written on the plane on the way to KubeCon US. Um, so it's, it's six months in. It's six months since we open sourced it. The, the, like the response has been astounding. Like we were, we spent the first like 12 hours we are, after we announced it on the top of Hacker News. We're over 6,000 GitHub stars now. We like we've just had so many people coming up to me and saying they love it and they use it. And and this is like the first time I've ever experienced that. So that's so awesome. We've spent the last six months like listening to everyone's feedback. Um, we've hired a bunch of people at Grafana Labs to work on it. We've got a load of open source contributors. I wanted to put together a load of stats. Um, but you can all go on GitHub and see them. Like, there's like 80, 90 contributors to Loki now, uh, which is just amazing for such a new project. And we've added some really cool features. So um, Loki, you, a lot of this will make a lot of sense later when I demo it. But Loki uh, takes a different approach to log aggregation. And we've added some of the things that people want that brings it a little bit closer and allows you to, to walk the trade off a bit better. Uh, Gotham, I'm not sure if he's here. I think he's in the other room. He has been working on query performance. So query performance has come on leaps and bounds in the last six months. It's a little bit of work to do, but we're getting there. And then we started developing our own query language as well. Um, and then finally, like today, I want to show you that we've added the ability to see context. We've added the ability to do live tailing. That was like one of our most requested features. But the doc up there, the Google doc, that was the design doc I wrote over a year ago now. Um, I like to start every project with a design doc. So uh, you know it's public. Go and read it. That will give you the real in-depth. So what are we doing today? Well, that was the intro. We're going to do uh, a summary of the FOSDEM talk, because um, it was so much fun. I thought I'd do it again. And then we're going to talk about what's new, where we're going, and, and hopefully do a demo and some questions later. The FOSDEM talk, I just recommend you go and watch it if, you're, if you want a bit more in-depth. Um, I think it was kind of midday. Uh, if anyone's ever been to FOSDEM, I may have had a few beers by this point. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good conference. Um, 
and it was just such a great opportunity. It was a, it was a lecture style, because it's running a university, so it's a lecture style conference. Like everyone was like up in front of me, it was so cool. Anyway, we, we, the FOSDEM co uh, talk basically focused on three things about Loki. It focused on how we've tried to deliver on like the simple and effective to, um, simple and cost effective to operate uh, promise that we made. Um, all lists should start with zero, by the way. Um, the second thing we talked about was how we've integrated it with existing observability tools, as I kind of alluded to in the keynote. It's all about that joined up workflow and like uh, joining the pillars together. And then the airplane mode, as I said, like I built Loki on a plane. I've uh, had to do a lot of traveling recently. So like having an airplane mode for your software, as well as making it cloud native, I think is kind of neat and makes, makes Loki cool. So first, what do I mean by simple to scale? Well, most log aggregation systems will index the contents of your logs. So they'll go through, they'll take every line in your logs, they'll tokenize it, and they'll stick it in a massive inverted index. And your index is your logs. Um, and this is really cool, right? This makes, uh, makes it super powerful. It makes it really easy to ask questions like, how many log lines had the word error in them? Right, which a lot of people want to do with their log aggregation system. This is also kind of how Google search works, right? It's how they index the internet. It's the same technology. The challenge here, I think for me, the challenge is these inverted indexes are hard to scale. You know, and this is a bit, bit contentious, for sure. Like, I think other people will say they're not. Uh, this is my experience, and I think there's a bit to why I think they're hard to scale. If you think about an inverted index, you take a log line, you split it up into you know, 10, 15 tokens, and then you're going to write those tokens to your index. Now, if you're going to optimize your index for writing, you're probably going to want to shard that index out over all your machines. And so what that means is that every log line is going to be you know, write amplified by 10, 15, however many tokens in that log line. Um, similarly, if you want to optimize it for reading, you kind of want to localize your reads. So you've got these two opposing trade-offs when scaling an inverted index. So in Loki, we, we do it completely differently. Um, we still do some amount of indexing. As I kind of alluded to in the keynote, there's degrees of indexing you can do. You know, something like OK Log by Peter eschewed all forms of indexing. Didn't want to do anything, like wanted it to be as simple as possible. The challenge there is the only thing you can really filter by is time, and you effectively just have to brute force every single query. Um, so in Loki, and this is what I'm trying to indicate here, in Loki, we try and give you a little bit of indexing, try and give you just a taste of it. We want to index metadata and labels about where the logs came from. In Prometheus uh, words, we'd say these are the target labels. And we give you this little bit of index that points to basically a stream of logs. And the stream of logs internally isn't indexed. So this allows you in the workflow that we'll show you later, this allows you to kind of filter what job you want to see, what met, you know, maybe what log level you want to see, what host, what server, et cetera. Get the logs for that, but then the rest of it you have to brute force. Um, because the index is so much smaller, you know, basically fits in memory. I mean, we run this thing at scale now, the index is tiny. So you don't really have a challenge scaling it. The other thing is these streams compress really well. Like all the logs from a single host, you get a lot of locality in the stream, you get great compression out of them. Again, I kind of ran out of time to get real numbers here, but I'll do a blog post in the next week or two and I'll actually give you facts. Um, then the second, second argument is, is integrating with existing systems. So I work for a company called Grafana, Grafana Labs. I don't actually work on Grafana, I work on backend stuff, so I work on Prometheus, on Cortex, on Loki. This, we, um, a long time, you know, 18 months ago or more, two years ago, I built this workflow, I built this slide, in fact. Um, it kind of showed what my day-to-day -day activity was as a DevOps engineer. You know, I'd get an alert, I mean, not in Slack, but I needed a picture, right? I'd get an alert on my phone. You know, I'd follow the link, it'd take me to a dashboard. In that dashboard, I'd click around, you know, I'd maybe use the dashboard, maybe it's a red style dashboard, um, to kind of hierarchically go through my services and find the one that's causing the errors, causing the high latency. And then I'd, you know, then I'd basically click on the dashboard, I'd click edit, and I'd copy the PromQL expression out into the Prometheus Expression Browser. Then I'd fiddle with it. I'd fiddle with it to get more information. I'd fiddle with it to find maybe the exact path of the request that's failing, or the exact instance, or the exact host, or whatever it was, I'd end up fiddling with the expression. And that copy and paste, and that fiddling, was something we really wanted to streamline in Grafana, when I, when I joined Grafana. So um, this is something David did. He added the explore mode, which allows you to click on a graph and, and go basically into a recreation of the Prometheus Expression Browser inside Grafana. 
and allows you to do that fiddling in a nice way because the explore mode, I don't know why I'm talking so much about the explore mode, it's just cool. Um, but the explore mode now has kind of cool tab completion and it gives you suggestions of ways in which you can improve your query and, and really helps you with that first step. But I guess the reason we really wanted this explore mode is because we wanted that second step. We wanted to be able to, once we've isolated maybe the instance or the job or the host that's causing the high latency or the error rates, we wanted to be able to, with one click, show you the logs for that host. And that's the whole motivation for Loki. You know, and then distributed tracing, obviously, is kind of something we'll do pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. So how do we do this? Well, we deploy an agent to all of your hosts. We need a log collection agent, so we build our own. It's called Promtail. We don't want to build our own. No one wants to build. You know, there's a few things in the world you should never do. You should never build a database. This will be the third I've built. You should never build a log collection agent. Luckily, we managed to hire someone who did a really good job of making this one better. Um, anyway, we built Promtail. What Promtail does is it embeds the Prometheus service discovery libraries. It embeds these libraries and uses the Prometheus integrations to collect metadata about your jobs. So the pod name, the labels associated with the pod, maybe the image that the pod's running, this kind of stuff. And then it associates that data with the stream of logs it's following on disk. So it'll tail the files that are in like var, lib, uh, var log docker somewhere. It'll tail them, it'll associate the labels with it and send that to Loki. Um, the reason we did it this way, I mean, you could do this with FluentD, but you'd have to tell FluentD what, what labeling rules you're using in Prometheus, and you'd have to translate between the two. Um, and we found like that was error prone and you kind of had to arrange yourself and put time and effort into making sure those two sets of rules were consistent. By using exactly the same libraries from Prometheus, we've systematically made sure the labels will be consistent with Prometheus. And this is key. Like you don't have to do anything to make sure you get the same labels as Prometheus. You just have to use the same config Prometheus uses. That's why we've called it Promtail because it's kind of really heavily Prometheus inspired. That's how we keep the labels consistent. And by keeping the labels consistent, we can enable that kind of experience of switching between the two seamlessly. So hopefully everyone gets that. I haven't missed anything. Nope. Right, so airplane mode is the next one. I realize I started off with zero, one, one, three. That's embarrassing. Um, sorry, I've <laughs> to do so many slides. So um, as I said, I needed to be able to run this on my laptop. Um, I needed to be able to develop quickly on my laptop. But also, I worked on another system called Cortex. And when we built Cortex, we, you know, we wanted to do it the cloud native way, microservices, Dockerized, cloud dependencies, big table, you know, S3, you name it. We wanted to use all the, all the cool stuff. Um, the problem we then found out is that it was really hard to run. Like, you had to have a Kubernetes cluster running in one of these clouds to, to run it. You had to provision everything and configure everything correctly. And there was just a lot of moving parts in Cortex. So when I wrote Loki, I wanted to avoid that experience. Like I wanted to give people a really nice out of the box, one command runs Loki and it just works. Um, and this was also like, you know, kind of selfishly, I also wanted more people to use Loki than ever ended up using Cortex. I also wanted more people to contribute to Loki than ever contributed to Cortex. And so we tried this. We, Loki uses a lot of the same code as Cortex to achieve all of the kind of DHTs and, and eventual consistency and all of the kind of algorithms are just Cortex algorithms. But we packaged it up as a monolith. And I know like someone at a cloud native conference talking about monoliths. Um, I'm gonna get shooed off stage soon, I think. Um, so we packaged it up as a monolith and we made it so one command you could run it on your laptop. We also added stubs to, um, to allow you to run with like local databases, like BoltDB, an embedded database, you know, so you could store the logs on disk. And this way, we gave you an experience where, yes, I could run it on an airplane, but you can also run it on your laptop or on your on-prem you know, servers or you know, in your Kubernetes cluster that isn't running in the cloud. Or even if it is running in the cloud, maybe you don't want to spin up a Bigtable instance because Bigtable can be expensive and stuff like that. So we built this monolith. Um, but now, of course, we're untrendy and we're only building monoliths. So we added a flag to the monolith to say, oh, by the way, we also want you to behave like a microservice. So you can optionally choose to do the complicated Cortex architecture. This is how we run Loki in production. We deploy, I think it's like nine or 10 services that together make up Loki, right? You don't have to, you run one, but we run 10. And you know, if you want to run 10 as well, you're welcome to do that, it's just a flag. Um, the cool thing about this architecture and the reason you know, we did it with Cortex and the reason microservices are a good idea is we get to isolate 
the query path from the right path, for instance. We get to scale them independently. You know, if you get a query of death, if you get someone that sends us a query that decides to load a terabyte into a 16 gig pod, like it will kill that pod, you know, but it won't kill the ingestion path. So you can kind of separate concerns about reads and writes and separate the reliability of the two. We, uh, we have this nice little model where we like to move quickly, we like to merge stuff, we, we deploy off master, we continuously deploy this. Um, but when you touch the ingesters, which are kind of the stateful bit and a bit sensitive, we like to do a bit of extra code review. But because the queries and the query front ends and so on, they're all like stateless. And if they break, we just roll them back. Like we like to move a bit quicker. We like to LGTM stuff a bit quicker there. So yeah, Loki's kind of optionally microservice oriented if you want. So that's the really brief summary of uh, the, the FOSDEM talk. The FOSDEM talk was, I think, 40 minutes. So if you want more details, I would just recommend you go and read that. And, and I think we'll, we'll do a write-up of it as well soon. Simple and cost effective. I've used number two here like I should have. Uh, integrated with existing observability tools and an airplane mode, but also being cloud native. So halfway through, what's new? I mean, that was kind of six months ago, right? That was where we started. We've had a huge amount of feedback. Like it's been overwhelming. I've never been involved in anything this successful. Um, so we've started to started to respond to some of it. You know, we had to hire a few more people. I can't, you know, write all this code myself. Um, and we've got to the position now where I think we're doing pretty well. We're like this close to being like, you know, ready for our first release. I was really hoping to stand here and announce we were doing, you know, Loki 0.1, but we're just a little bit, a little bit far. So I'll tell you what we've done. The four things I want to show today that we've added to Loki are log filter chaining. This is our first step towards our own query language for Loki. Um, the most common thing people want to do, you know, to fulfill the just give me grep is like filter their logs, but also like filter them in a negative sense, filter them in a positive sense. Not everyone likes writing regular expressions, so sometimes you just want equality. So we've added log filter chain. You can have as many of these as you want. Um, extracting labels from logs, I mentioned that earlier. So we, uh, we run internally. I hope the demo works, I really do. We run internally, we extract the debug level from the logs. So this now, you know, we include the debug level in our index. Every stream that comes in gets split into four streams. Um, and this is kind of cool because it allows you a little bit more power. Like uh, the, the work, the use case I really want to show, you know, in the next few weeks is the ability to add an annotation to your pod that says like, oh, I just want to record in Loki like, you know, warnings and errors and info. Like I don't want to record debug. And then if you see an error, you can like go along and just by changing the annotation in your pod, you can change it to do you know, a full debug logging back to Loki. You don't have to change your code, but it will just be a done through Prometheus um, uh, relabeling rules. So that's like next time. So we can now extract labels from logs. One of the biggest things we were asked for is live tailing. Like people love log, uh, kubectl logs dash F. They really like that workflow. Um, and so they wanted to see that in Grafana. So we've got that, hopefully can show you that. Um, and context. You know, again, modeled after grep. People like to build pipelines of greps, but grep has that dash C, you know, co uh, context. You know, I want to see three lines before a match and four lines after a match. So we've added that to Loki. Yeah, and there's much more. So let me see how good the Wi Fi is. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I need to, one second, display. Arrangement, mirror. And one tip is you should always, always close your Slack first. So, um, yeah, let's, let's just try using the live environment. Nope. Yeah, don't read my email. Uh, so I'm just, we're just going to go to our instance of, of um, the Wi-Fi seems good. We're going to go to our instance of Loki that's running uh, in a dedicated cluster inside Grafana Labs. And we, we run, I don't know the final count, it's like 15 to 30 Kubernetes clusters distributed around the world. Um, you know, we've got ones for dedicated specific applications. We've got one dedicated to specific um, uh, like customers and regions and so on. And we like to get a global view of all our logs in one place. So we run an ops tools cluster where we do that. Uh, I know you didn't see a login. That's because it's behind Google's IAP proxy. So good luck. So let's do the, uh, let's do the workflow. I'm, we've, we've got this demo app called uh, the TNS demo. Let's actually do a port forward. 
This was me trying to run it locally earlier. Yeah, didn't work. Um, cube cuttle config use context ops tools one. Cube cuttle port forward namespace TNS demo. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Uh, service app 808080. 80, 80. There we go. So. We built this demo because I feel like, like whenever people show you demos, it's a fake thing, like it doesn't have a UI. And I, I really want my demos to have real things. So, um, so I built a Hacker News clone. Um, they've all got fake uh, stories. These are not real stories. Uh, they're supposed to be a joke. Don't take them too seriously. Um, please, don't sue me. Uh, you, can, look, you can upvote. And like the links work, um, but so th just to show you, there is something going on. But sometimes it fails. Why is that? Um, so we can go to our demo app and see that sometimes there's failures. Oh no! So we're going to go and we're, well, we've seen that the database is periodically failing. So I can I can go and load up the explore view, and this shows me yes, there's definitely now you can see that I can kind of include you know maybe I want to see it by instance. You know, OK, there's only one instance. That's not helpful. Um, and I can also say, well, I'm interested in only those 500s. So you can click there. And this is really designed for people who like, maybe aren't that confident with PromQL. And we can just help them build it and find what they want. And when you're kind of getting paged at, at 8 AM just before you're about to go on the keynote stage, this is really useful. That actually happened, by the way. So now we can zoom in on, on a, one of the particular spikes, because we can see there was a spike, uh, five QPS of, of 500s at that point. And we can go up here, and we can say, I want to see the logs for that. And then there you go. There's the logs. You can see various errors in there. That's pretty cool. That's the logs just for that. We can see, um, oh, it's all for the same label, so it doesn't, doesn't do anything. But this is like, there's a lot of stuff in here, right? So maybe I just want to see errors. And I can filter down just by error. I tried to demo this on someone else's keyboard, but it was a Norwegian keyboard, and I couldn't find the, the, you know, the pipe operator. So, so here we go. Now we've seen it's filtered by errors. And we can even like, do pattern match. Oh, I won't do we can do multiple of these. We can do you know, looks like, uh, you know, something like that. Yeah, it works. So there we go. And then one final thing we can do is we can uh, we can do some kind of ad hoc analysis of the 1,000 results we got in the browser. This is done browser side right now. What we really want to do, well, I'll talk about that in a sec. I'll show you what we want to do in a sec. But, but one of the things that is kind of cool, so you see we're in this view, and we filtered by error. So we're only seeing errors, right? But I want to see maybe that error is going to be preceded by a stack trace that doesn't include the term error. So I want to see the context that might include that stack trace. And so we can click and show context. And this is then going back to Loki, doing a couple of queries. And, and this is your grep-c kind of workflow. And I just think this is so cool. Like, I should actually include stack traces so it works even better. But yeah. What was the other thing I was going to show you? Um, ah, live tailing, yes. So let's uh, go to the last 15 minutes. And let's uh, get rid of that. And then I've never actually done this, because uh, I was told by David that it's working, and I trust him that much. Um, so here we go. We click here, and we click live. And then what happens? So received. And it, it takes 10 seconds, because for various reasons, you have to leave a buffer. Uh, you have to have a delay to get things in order. And it work. Oh, well. Uh, you know, this is how you can tell it's a real demo. Uh, we were really trying to get this to work. Is David in the audience? He normally is. Is he hiding? He's down there, is he? What have I, what have I done wrong? Yeah, it didn't work, did it? Oh, well. There'll be a better demo online, I promise. Um, so the, the other thing I want to show you, so we've shown you the log chaining, the extracting labels from logs. Um, have we got a log level in our thing yet? We, we do not. Ah, well, two out of four, that's not bad for a demo. So let's carry on. So that's the demo, two out of four. What's next? So as I said, like, 
the biggest question we get about Loki is, when can I use it in production? Um, we use it in production already. We've been using it in production for six months. It occasionally lost some data, but now it's pretty stable. Like, we... <laughs> it's very infrequent. I wasn't expecting you to laugh at that. <laughs> so, uh, but now it's really stable, actually. Like, we're really happy with it. Um, we we're going to cut the beta, the first beta, like a 0.1 version really soon. But don't let any of this stop you. Like, go and use the master branch. It's good. It's stable. It mostly works, as you see. We, um, I, I alluded to um, we want to do that kind of aggregation view that you saw, showing you how, what percentage of errors were which message. We want to do that server side so we can give you bigger pictures over longer time periods. Um, so we're, we're, we're designing this, what we're calling LogQL, this new query language. We want it to look as much like Prometheus as possible. This is just some ideas, like it might not look like this. There's a design doc that's linked in the top right. I'll upload the slides afterwards and you can go and check out the design doc. We're like, I think Cyril, I mean, I've got like 20 unread messages from Cyril right now. So I think he's implementing this right now. Um, and he's probably also telling me why live tailing is not working. Uh, so yeah, we want to we wanna be able to implement some basic aggregation so you can start using Loki to plot graphs, so you can start using Loki to do numeric ana analysis. Loki will never be for business analytics. You know, that's not what we're trying to build. We're trying to help developers debug and troubleshoot their applications. So we're never going to be able to execute these queries as fast as like the fully indexed log aggregation systems, but it doesn't mean we can't try. And so we've got plans around like this fully parallelized streaming query uh, engine that we're building, which I think is going to be really cool. I'm really excited about that. So once we've got that kind of numeric aggregation in LogQL, we want you to be able to use the Prometheus machinery to build alerts off of it. Like it's, you know, I, I'm pretty opinionated about this stuff. I don't think you should be using logs to do your alerts. Um, but, you know, not everyone lives in a panacea and sometimes your application will only log error messages and sometimes it won't expose metrics. So. We wanted to support, we want to help you kind of, that's kind of uh, use cases. Especially actually somebody came up to me earlier, uh, gave me a really good example of like kernel drivers. You know, I doubt we'll ever get the Prometheus instrumentation libraries into the kernel. Um, and a lot of drivers only ever write error messages to dmessage. So we want Loki to support the use case where we can count those error messages that are happening in dmessage and allow you to alert on them. So this is a really good idea that someone came to the, uh, came to the booth in the hall and said, like, I really want to use Loki for auditing, but I want you to, like, add this, whatever that means, signature chaining, so we can verify that they've not been tampered with. I don't know how to do this. Um, I'm going to have to go away and do some research. But if any of you know how to do this, PRs are welcome. Uh, you know, we, we want to do this. I think it's a cool use case. Um, we talked about uh, airplane mode and Bolt DB. Um, but in production, you still probably want to be using something like Bigtable or, GC or, uh, or DynamoDB. And so we want to remove that dependency. We want you to be able to run in production on BoltDB. I think that'd be really cool. And then we want to launch the first beta as soon as possible. And with that, I'm done. Thank you very much. First question. Uh, thanks for the talk and thanks for the tool. I think it's very awesome. Um, my question would be, you mentioned that you don't like um, alerting out of logs. Unfortunately, uh, some of my colleagues are using metrics out of the logs. Do you think Loki can help me in this? I don't like it, but I have to support that. Thanks. Yeah, no, no, it's a good question. So can Loki help you extract metrics from logs? I mean, yes, that's exactly what we want to do. We already have some basic ability to count pattern matches in the exporter and implement kind of what mtail and the grok exporter are doing. So yes. I'm I'm standing here because I can't hear you otherwise and there's a speaker just here. But uh that's just why I'm standing here. Um, I was playing around yesterday with Loki a little bit and I was wondering if there is a possibility to um also digest the logs that you take in and put them in some sort of a structured data format so that querying the data will get a lot easier and you're um, able to run analysis on them as well. Yeah, no, so can we take uh, logs and, and give them a bit more structure? Sure, 
like in the agent Promtail, we already have the ability to like ingest log format logs or JSON logs, use a JSON path expression to take like a field out of that logs and promote it into the index. So that's how we're doing log level internally that I can't show you. Um, so yes, the short answer is we can take some things. Now, the, the longer answer is you don't want to do that too much because you don't want to put everything in the index because you might as well run Elastic in that case. OK, so, so the problem should be addressed on the prompt tail level. That's pretty much the Oh, I mean, we've got, yeah, you can do the same library Loki side as well if you're using FluentD. But, um, but we do it prompt tail because then it runs on the user's machines and not on our servers. Next question. There's one, uh, one over here. Oh, no, you got a mic, sorry. Hello. OK, uh, thanks for the talk. We are using Elastic for logging because we have strong dependencies or security dependencies for policy airbag. Do you have any plan to cover the airbag in Loki for the future? To support RBAC, did you say? RBAC, yes. Role-based access control. Yes. Yeah, so Loki is, is a multi-tenant system already. I kind of didn't cover it in the talk, but uh, when you push data into Loki, you can specify a tenant ID, and that will keep it isolated from other tenants. And then when you specify queries, again, when you send queries, you specify a tenant ID as a HTTP header. And, and we already, already do, uh, do multi-tenancy. Now, role-based access control isn't the same as multi-tenancy, obviously. Like, you need to be able to put a gateway in front of that. And really, like, the expectation is you can put a gateway in front of that to enforce authentication and authorization to do that. One of the things we've been toying with the idea of is putting, like, whitelist and blacklist uh, filters in to Loki to say that, like, this tenant can only access you know, met, uh, logs that match this set of matches, because like, I think the matches syntax is really nice to specify these things in. Um, but yeah, like, ideas are welcome. I think you could probably, you know, we're trying to build the building blocks to do that kind of thing, but we're not there yet, right? Another, another question. Hello. Hey, uh, how does uh, Promtail and Loki deal with the horrible, horrible thing that is multi-line logs and being able to search across those? Yeah, we don't. Yeah, it's really hard, right? Yeah. Like, uh, that's why we did context, right? So that you can see for that stream what came before and after it. Like, I, I, I don't know enough about how other people deal with it, but I've not seen a nice solution to that. I mean, then I get, yeah, no, we don't. Like, that's what context is for. Hi, first time hearing about Loki. Fantastic, really nice. Thank you Thank very you. much. So uh, we're using Elstack for log-based monitoring and uh, exporters Prometheus and Grafana for metric-based monitoring. My question is, um, would you have such feature that Loki is besides, you know, this kind of querying and seeing logs and metrics side by side uh, on Grafana, would you generate some automatic URL that could point back to Kibana and you could basically search based on the similar filters there as well to see the logs? So I think the question was, could we, could we add URLs into Grafana so you can do the same workflow with Elastic? Uh, basically, yes. Within yeah. the same time frame where you have the spike, for example, you select in, in the Grafana on Loki, and you can um, follow the URL to your... Uh, I don't know the exact answer to that. I don't work on the front end. I know we are working on adding an Elastic data source for the Explore view. So maybe it's not via URLs, but maybe you can build the same workflow with Elastic and, and other monitoring systems. But then like, the point of Loki is that that workflow is automatic, like, and it just works, right? Whereas in other systems, you have to go and set them up and configure them so that the labels make sense in both of them. Um, yeah, and I know we're going to add an Elastic workflow to explore. I think, I mean, I know people are working on it right now, so. Any more questions? One at the front. Hi, uh, thanks for the nice presentation. And I'm wondering, after you drill down to the logs in the example you did, uh, what would be the next step to uh, zoom in into the profiling, into into what's uh, into the co uh, a deeper context of what? Yeah, that's no, a good question. Happen. Like, what's the next step after exploring logs? I mean, what I really want to do. I mean, we the whole of the Loki stack and tracing stack embeds open tracing, and I now have to go and embed open telemetry as well. Um, and they emit in the log lines trace IDs. And so that workflow I alluded to in the keynote about clicking on a trace ID and going to your Zipkin or Jaeger or whatever, that I think is the next step for us. Um, the exemplars is another great example. We don't have that yet, but I really want to add that support in Grafana. And basically, I want Grafana to do like trace visualization or at least link to other tracing systems. 
that's probably where we're going to go in the next kind of six to 12 months. Um, but like suggestions are welcome, right? Where are you? Oh. Um, great demo. Hello. Uh, uh, well, I have a question about what you were saying about uh, uh, generating alerts off of logs, right? Uh, are there any, is it even feasible to m generate synthetic metrics off of logs? So you can do it now with Loki. Um, you can Prometheus. Yes. So you're, you can set filters in Promtail, mm -hmm. and Promtail will export the number of logs that match a certain regular expression, for instance. Oh. And that then, you know, you can scrape that in Prometheus, you can rate that, and you can say if the rate of errors is greater than X, fire an alert. Fire, fire. But I want to make it better, right? I want to be able to do it server side as well. The problem with doing it like this is you end up. Uh, like not having history when you add new expressions and filters, for instance. All right, one more. One more. Hello. Hello. First of all, thank you for Loki. It's really great. And the second question, you're a little bit cheating on the first slide, so you show that your workflow means that you have an alert. And in the Loki for now, you don't have any alerts. What do you think about this, and how would it be shown? And maybe you will use use method or red method for this scheme, so it's very... Did, did you say I was cheating? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You, you noticed. But it was nice. Well, so we, we have alerts off of Prometheus alerts, right? We use them extensively. And so the first step of really, hey, we get an alert, then we go and look at the dashboard. That's really talking about that kind of workflow. But, but no, you know, we don't have Loki alerts yet, and it's something we're working on, like Fairpoint. OK, thank you very much.